Hey, my name is Lucas. And my name is Jacob. The Bro Show Podcast. Welcome back to another week. Another seven days have passed. I know, another week, and I'm still wearing jeans. <laughs> I almost did it. Are like, they the same ones from last week? The same jeans. And um, That's I exciting. almost thought, you know what? I'm going to go back to sweatpants for the podcast. And I thought, no, the bro show community deserves to see me in jeans. And you know what else I'm wearing? Socks. Usually, I'm just on here barefoot, putting the mic cord between my toes all willy-nilly. Nope, I'm not showing feet anymore. I mean, there's been a lot of comments about it saying, you're just showing your feet for free. Yeah. SaveLucas.com. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you, we actually could, uh, for the bro show, do an experiment where, um, you know, on Vanderpump Rules, they, <laughs> this season, they all tried to sell feet pics. Oh, they did? To um, save up for- I watched the reunion and they mentioned that, actually. Oh, yeah. They all tried to sell feet pics to save up for Raquel's nose job. How much did they make? They actually like made nothing. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I... think about these foot websites, like- there's probably just, there's so many hundreds and thousands of feet that your feet might not be the chosen ones. But is it probably a thing where people have specific people they want to see feet of? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I want to see Kyla Delavine's feet. Like, if, if I had a foot fetish. Oh, like, yeah, and she'd I have if, a profile. I wonder if, like, foot fetish people have specific people. I'm assuming. For sure. But... So, yeah, we could do an experiment. But I would I was thinking we can't promote it though. So oh, we can't, so like, you like, can't like we just have to Instagram. go on a foot website and like try to get noticed on there. I feel like it should be a little bit more spicy like selling on nipples or something. Cuz it's kind picks. of overdone. It's kind of like yeah. I, I feel like the mouth gets oversaturated. I, Maybe, it is. Is there a new sort of like, like weird fetish? Nipples. That's true. I'd be down to sell close-ups of my nipples. Yeah. That feels less intimate than feet for some reason. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I uh. would yeah, I'd do it for like five dollars. Oh yeah, let us know below what challenge we should do to see who's better. Comment it below. It turns into a full on like we both have OnlyFans. Oh yeah, and we Who start out. Money? It's as a joke, as a challenge, and then like we end up quitting everything. Oh like, yeah, we both have our individual OnlyFans accounts. How have you been? Um, I've been good. Oh. It's the middle of February. It feels like 2022 is just starting to kick in. Finally. Yeah, I feel like it takes a while to realize that. Oh, it's 2022. Oh. I know. It's a it's, new year. It's a new year. And we're here. But um, <laughs> this year, um, I might want to move to a Disney town. Oh, I, you you told me about this all Yeah, I saw an article and I just had to bring it up on here. There's a Disney town that's going to be happening in Palm Springs. And yeah, according to IGN.com, Disney is working to build multiple planned communities inspired by its theme park. And yeah. It's designed to permanently immerse the most dedicated Disney fans. So you would permanently live there? It's not going there for a week and acting like I'm a princess? It's no. It's like a princess living in this community? Th it, that's the thing. It's a permanent ass thing. Like you just, yeah, unless you have a second home, like you're just fully living in Disney. And I wonder if this is because, you know, there's been sort of that trend Disney of being, adults. Yeah, there's Disney adults. Like we're also obsessed with Disney. Like now you can literally live. In Disney. So I was wondering, is it the type of thing where they, I guess, why would they pay you? But is oh, it for yeah. really rich people? Because I picture it to be like nursing home cast. And I don't know. Like what I mean is that <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure there's like fancy nursing homes. Oh, you think is it'd it be like, like a that? retirement type thing? Oh, oh, retirement home. I think that I think some of them like get up to 20000 a month. Yeah. So they already, Disney already made a community, I guess, in Celebration, Florida. The town's literally called Celebration. And it was in 1996. And home prices started at $1.6 at Celebration, Florida, the Disney town. So I don't know what this town's going to be, but hopefully a little bit cheaper than that. Oh. 1.6 starting? So is it a thing where you live there, but you can still have a job? For some reason, I was <laughs> expecting... I honestly thought they were doing this thing because people wanted it. Well, they wanted to create stories off of real people's lives. So you would live there and legit quit everything and live there and go to like the bakery <laughs> every day. And 
people would interview you every day and they would create stories about your life and make it magical. And then oh. and then there's a chance that it would turn into a movie. Like, for some reason, I thought they were trying to make Disney movies real life and turn it into, like, a big... I don't know. I was pitching... So it isn't no, they what still, I was pitching. No, they still... That is part of living in the community, apparently. You do, like... You have, like, kind of a story going on, I guess. Like, you still have, like, a job. But then when you go home, like, you kind of, like, live out, like, your Disney story. Oh, okay. Because it says Story Living by Disney is a master planned residential community that is designed to be the perfect setting for Disney fans to write the next exciting chapter in their lives. Um, and apparently it's supposed to be gonna ha- it's gonna have the warmth and charm of a small town with the beauty of a resort. So this one I'm talking about is gonna be located in Rancho Mirage, which is just outside of um Palm Springs, because Walt Disney um once lived there. Oh, okay. And it, this is where it, all, it explains, like, what the vibe is going to be. Okay. Residents will be able to attend Disney-themed activities and programming throughout the year. Um, And in addition, you can also join a special club for an extra fee. That's kind of annoying. Like, I feel like if you buy a house in the Disney neighborhood, like, you automatically should be in the special club. What? Yeah, I want to... Yeah. I don't know, like, what happens at the special club. Like, if it's extra Disney stuff going on it's there. It's probably or- the most important shit happening in that Disney club. Yeah, so I, it, it does say you, you participate in different Disney-themed activities. So I guess I did exaggerate when I said, like, your whole, like, you have to live out this story every day and, like, you have a script and everything. But, yeah, there is elements of a Disney story going on, though. Yeah, I, I'm so glad that you talked about this on the podcast because I heard about it a few days ago. And I was literally under the as- assumption that you would audition to get into this small <laughs> town. They would pay you. And the whole thing was... They wanted to create movies off of real people's lives. Oh, you thought it was going to be like a reality show? No, not a reality show, but they were going to document people's lives and then try to turn it into a movie, and it was going to prove that your own life can be magical or some like, corny shit like that. Oh, but it sounded yeah. cool, but th- this still sounds cool. Oh, well, they do explain. They say every single element of these communities will be steeped in a story. Um, so and the like, residents will be active participants in the stories. So what I was thinking is kind of correct, actually. But it says it's not entirely clear what they mean by that yet. So like, maybe they'll like they'll be like a Cinderella part, and like you could be like one of what? What was the story of Cinderella? Wasn't she just like a the seven? She was like a servant to a family, and they all hated her, right? Yeah. So maybe like you could sister. every now and then you could like go to Cinderella's house and be like, "F you!" Like you'll never get with Prince Charming. You it know? would be like. Someone has to vlog this or something because I'm actually, I still don't get it. I know. I'm, this article even said like they don't really know what it means by every single element of these communities will be steeped in story. Like it doesn't really, so maybe it is a thing where like you're a lawyer by day, you come home, you don't just chill out and watch TV and hang out with your family. Like you're in a story. You're like, now a lot in. Yeah. Like your <laughs> wife is now like a different character and like you guys don't act like family at home because like, unfortunately you got different roles, you know? I mean, Basically, what I'm taking from this is that, like, it sounds fun to do this not even being part of the Disney weasel thing, neighborhood thing, because I should just do a thing where, like, once it hits 7 o'clock at night, I'm, like, a different person. I'm just going to create a persona. Oh, yeah. I have a different, like, story every single night. Yeah. So then you have your real... It would be fun because you have your real life story, which I guess you could call all of our lives a story. But then once that gets a little bit boring, you can step into, like, this fake story. Yeah. And it's, like, kind of magical, too. Oh, yeah. So, uh, this whole, like, Disney adult thing, because people that are going to buy these houses are so obsessed with Disney. So, it just is a thing where they're just so obsessed with Disney, or, like, do, is it deeper than that? And I don't understand it. Because I like Disney movies. I just don't have a picture of myself doing this. But, like, um, what do you, like, picture yeah, a Disney adult whatever that means to be like well i even picture like disney adults as we know it like they just like going to disney world disneyland like it isn't anything too crazy basically yeah but i feel like the people who actually move to the town like that's a whole different tier where like you want to live like that's all you want your life to be is like snow white and the seven dwarves and sleeping beauty now that you're saying that i just got like this surge of like i'm never moving there even if someone forced me because i just pictured I'm just one of those people where, like, sometimes it's just fun to joke around. Mm-hmm. And I picture me being at this Cinderella event, and then I'm just joking with people, being like, wait, isn't it so funny that we're all taking it so seriously, but, like, it's all fake? That's funny. <laughs> and then, like, they'd be all so mad at me, having, like, pitchforks saying, this is real. Oh, yeah. I picture everyone would take it so seriously. Like, if you joke around about 
these like magical things being fake, then like they kick you <laughs> out of there and like bully you. There is a house. In, <laughs> there is a house in my neighborhood where they have they had a Disney thing on top of their garage, a little Disney mouse, and also they have a little well in front of the house. Like it's not. I know their yard doesn't actually have a well, unless they're the only house in the neighborhood that has a well. But like I wells think, are cool. Is there something to do with Disney and wells? For sure. Yeah. Like, did it, Snow it White have a well? well. Shadi Toy and Dodge Disney yeah, movie Dis- well. Disney movie well. Because, like, that's Disney. I just know that's part of, like, their Disney aesthetic fantasy. Yeah, it does kind of remind me of, like, Jack and A wishing and Jill. well. Isn't that a thing in Disney movies? When you wish upon a well. Um, I mean, I typed in Disney. Well, I'm just going to pretend that the Dis- the fake well they have in their front yard is also part of the Disney fantasy. Like, I almost want to knock on their door. I've never talked oh, to them. Oh, Cinderella wishing well. It's a thing. Oh, okay. At Magic Kingdom, which I think is... Disney World. I want to knock on their door and tell them, like, not saying I want you to leave, like, leave our neighborhood, but maybe you should move to the new Disney town. Because I feel like you can have, like, a, you can fully live it out, you know? Oh, yeah, fully be a... I'm telling them after Like this. you're living in Disney. But, um... So the, so it's gonna... The, the previous one in 1996... That's the thing. I, didn't, I wish I looked Florida. into that more because I want to know, like, in the 1996 Celebration Florida, like, did they live their life as a story? Like, what... That one seems more of, like, a luxury thing, though, because home prices starting at $1.6 in 1996... So that leads Wouldn't that be assume... so expensive? Like, that's already expensive in today's money, but back then, that'd even be more. Yeah, it leads me to assume that this one in Palm Springs is going to be, like, $5 million plus. I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that, like... No, because I think it will be... Oh, actually, I remember reading the article. There was, like, there's going to be smaller homes, like, town homes, and there's also going to be, like, big estates. So I think there's going to be a little bit for everyone. I'm assuming oh, okay. all of it will be pretty expensive, though. But, um... The thing is that the community is also going to be serviced by Disney cast members. So Cinderella is going to be working at the bakery. Snow White's going to could be your like, I don't know, your car mechanic. Wait. So, OK. So the thing about this is that now that you're now that I'm hearing this, like, I think it is more of a thing where it's more of just like it's more um real. This is what I picture it to be like. Mm-hmm. Or like this is this is this is a cool idea. It's a neighborhood of like, let's say, 50 houses to 100 houses. And, and like and like it seems like everyone likes the feeling of a small town but yeah. this small town has like is, is a Disney small town so like yeah like you can live there just it's just like for a while you're just like it is yeah. fun to feel like you're in a Disney movie I guess and like their Applebee's like the waiters and waitresses would be like Prince Charming and like Pocahontas and stuff yeah and like you said the um when your tile is flat like the the mechanic oh, would yeah. be um, <gasps> or um Snow White Ariel's hot dad. The big mermaid. Oh, like, would be he what? He can't even move his legs, but like he's like, cause he's in a he's a literal mermaid, but like he gets like squirms around the town, like and helps he's a little you. Little warm. Like he's your gardener or something. That'd be fun. But um, it's not sure. It's not clear if the members of if the Disney characters are gonna live in the town or if they're gonna like commute and they'll be if they're gonna like commute in and out of town every day. But they we don't know. They don't know if like they're actually gonna live there or not. But. I hope Signing that... up to be Cinderella, and it turns out your actual life is being Cinderella. I know, like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I hope that they get a commute in and out, because like so they need a break. I feel like people love it, though. Okay, maybe some people are actually just like, I want to just We would be, be like, Cinderella. oh, you don't even have to pay me. I'm doing it for free. Oh, yeah, because can you imagine if all the kids in the town are like, that's Cinderella's house. Like, they're going to be, like, ding-dong ditching it. Like, oh, my God, you missing your slipper? Oh, yeah. That type of thing. Because she probably would live, like, above the donut shop. But that would be a fun job. Like, if you're the one who commutes in and out. I'm, okay, since this was Audi, I think, in 1996, I want to, is like a documentary about this? Because I have so many questions. Is it more of just, like, we're living in a Disney town, but we're just regular people? Mm. Or is it more of, like, we're living in a Disney town, and we actually fully believe we're Disney characters? Like, yeah, is it a I'm, thing where, like, like, a middle ground, or is it just one or the other? Yeah, is it, a, it might be a thing where after three years, like, you're completely brainwashed, and, like, you forget about your outside family. Is it actually and, like, a cult? Yeah, is it? Is, oh my god, the Disney cult. That's gonna be the documentary in ten years. Because I was picturing, like, when you sent this all ago, I was like, I like, I'm just picturing me moving there, and it. <laughs> for some reason, like, I immediately thought if I moved there, you just have to cut off your family because you're not a Disney person. <laughs> I mean, you have to. You like your phone is checked at the gate. Like, you can't even bring your cell phone in because you can't look at the internet or anything. Like, you fully have to be immersed in this Disney bubble. Yeah, fully live in this Disney time. But, as the article went on, it sort of said, like, yeah, this is um a Disney town. And, like, they said they sort of <laughs> – no, but they sort of had the – it came to the conclusion of, like, is – um I mean, are company towns the future? 
<laughs> like, like, is it going to be a thing where, like, you never live in a non-branded town? Like, your town is, like, the Taco Bell town, and, like, all you do is, like, talk about Crunchwrap Supremes and spicy nachos? Oh, when you were talking about this, I was, like, joking in my, like, I just, like, thought of a joke in my head that, like, if, like, if, like, we created our town, and I was, like, what, what is, like, the bro show town? I don't know. Who <laughs> knows? I mean, we you guys, tell a friend about the podcast. We need to spread the word so we can get big enough to have a bro show commune. No, the thing about it is that, I mean... I can't really see it happening, but I watched this video the other day that was kind of about how, like, brands are a lifestyle now. It was talking about how, um, there's, so, it was talking about how salt and brands are a community. Even owning an iPhone, if someone else has an iPhone, it's like you already have that one thing in common. And the video was kind of saying how, like, they think that it's a new thing, how, how people can, um have something in common with each other just something as simple as owning a product of the same thing now that you mentioned apple though like i would be down to live in an apple town oh everything's just apple i know it actually oh no it sounds like kind of scary to me i know it does sound scary like have everything's branded yeah because then it would just like because then it would yeah i feel like that's like i feel like that's like capitalism times like a thousand i know like you moved to like the ritz cracker town and and then i picture like i try to eat like smith crackers but they like put me in jail oh yeah a little Cause... dorito city <laughs> no but um <laughs> i could well if we think about a small version of this which is actually so cool mm-hmm. um taco bell has a hotel in palm springs and that's like okay. a and that's like a staycation for living in taco bell land i, oh, feel, yeah, I feel like I'm i down... like the idea of like these lands but i just wouldn't want to it sounds like it's weird. temporary I, it sounds weird like if the city that i was living in said well now the town of Chevy and like everything you everywhere you go is just Chevy like it sounds like yeah. Chevy the cow brand it sounds like a kind of a nightmare but um <laughs> the good thing about Disney Town though is that people can visit even if you don't live there you can That's buy what I was a, wondering you can buy a day pass so I don't know if it's gonna be kind of like a mini Disneyland where like people live at this theme park but you can pay to visit it what happened to the one in 1996 like people still own those houses like what the f happened I don't know must not have done that good. I don't know. Or maybe, because I, I don't know if the one that I'm thinking of in Florida, I remember watching this video about like the estate, like, people, some people live at Disney World and it's like these oh. fancy ass houses, like mansions and they live at Disney World. So I don't know if that's what the Celebration Florida one was. Oh, okay. Because that doesn't sound too cra- crazy. Like if you love Disney World, I just uh-huh. can't believe like Disney is huge. Like I know. okay, like Disney's a brand, but then they have amusement parks. Like in the in the, people love the amusement parks. Like they everyone wants to go. Yeah, I feel like I want to do a little bit of a sob story. Um, since I never went to Disneyland or Disney World as a kid, I feel like that's why I'm not like a full Disney adult. I went to Disneyland when I was like ten or something. I'm gonna say you should be a Disney you, adult. You had a um, you had yeah. We were in LA for some reason, so we went to Disneyland. But yeah, I. So do you like? But I feel like it's these people who went year after year, like these, like these people who live by, by no. Disneyland, like people in LA who grew up there, like they're obsessed with Disney because, like, of course they are, like they associate their whole childhood with it, you know. I yeah, I get it because when I went to um when I was in school in California because I lived there for like two years when I was younger, um people would have like season season passes to mm. Disneyland. I don't go and, multiple times a year. And like and I, and like the big deal was like it kept getting more expensive and people were mad about it. But mm. that's beside the point. But the point is is that it seemed like if you had a Disney season pass, like there was multiple people in my class that did. Mm-hmm. It seems like those are the people that like are obsessed with Disney because like they're just going all the time. And it may, maybe it's mm. not even a Yeah, and it well it actually is about Disney because everything's Disney themed. And I think I can kind of relate because I think my Disney world was worlds of fun in Kansas city. It's like, there's a bomb ass amusement park. There's also oceans of fun. So that's worlds of fun and oceans of fun. Like that to me, I feel like my whole life, whenever I go there, I'll be like, hell yes. Worlds of fun. Cause like I went there year after year growing up. So I feel like that's, yeah. that's my little Disney world. So and if I, they made like a worlds of fun neighborhood, like I would be like, I'll move. But, <laughs> but um, <laughs> then Something else that people love about Disney World and stuff, I think, is that there's, like, an element of, even though most, I feel like everyone knows this is fake, obviously, but, like, but, like. <laughs> some people believe it's, like, well, real characters. Well, maybe some people do, but, like, what know. I mean is that I feel like there's an element of, like, when you walk into Disneyland or Disney World, it's, like, magical. Yeah, it's, like, like, a whole different when universe. when you're an adult, I feel like people still think that's, like, cool as F, which oh, is yeah. cool. It is cool, like, you didn't see all the characters come to life. Yeah. I just, like. 
think it's weird that people are Disney adults. But I think I'm joking. <laughs> but since I grew up going to like worlds of fun, I feel like I always I'm like, oh, I'm going to go on a roller coaster and be like shook around so hard, flipped upside down, Mick twisties, you know? Yeah. But when I go to Disney World, I remember being like, when I went to Disneyland, of course I liked it, but I remember thinking like, where are all the rides? And they have a couple. Like I know there's rides. Like Tower of Terror is really fun, but like <laughs> I feel like I didn't get shook around enough. Like I want to be in like a like a cage and I got flipped upside down. Like, oh, just like crazy shit. I know. Like That's my favorite thing about amusement parks, just like getting shook. Something else about Disneyland is I think I've been three times. And even when I feel like every time I've gone, it was kind of like a negative energy. Because oh God, even when I, I was 10, the first time I went out of the three times, I remember just like waiting in this line because because like the um new thing was the um cows thing. And I remember it was like me, you, and like a few of our sisters and stuff. And we were like waiting in there for an hour and a half or some shit. And we were all just like, wait, this is so long. And then it's always the same thing. It's always the same thing when you're waiting in these long lines. You get on the ride. You're done with the ride. And maybe we're out as pessimist in our family. But I remember after every ride, we'd say, so an hour and a half for 60 seconds of fun. That's dumb as fuck. <laughs> and like, I wanted to say that I feel like that also ruins it. Like, I got, like even me by myself, I just know, I just think, like, it would be cool if someone gave me a fast pass every time. Oh, because you got, like, I a know, Disney tour? If you go on the weekend to Disneyland, it's, like, busy. I know it is. And I think <laughs> another reason why I kind of do have a negative thing with Disneyland <laughs> is because whenever we've ever gone, it's in the dead of summer and we are just sweating so hard so i feel oh, like it does yeah. that adds another negative energy when you're and when you're sweating and your clothes start getting stuck to your body <laughs> that's when i automatically just feel disgusting oh you know what i just thought of though when i was talking about wanting to be shooken around yeah okay i wish there was like a john cena type person like a giant and oh. um you could pay for them to grab you and then shake you around. No. Like, that would be the most fun thing ever. Like, if they just grabbed you and, like, say, say they only use one hand and they grab you by the back of your shirt, shake you <laughs> around so hard. Like, that'd be the most fun <laughs> ride ever. Every time I see... <laughs> it's so funny. I'm I'm jealous of this. But when I see little kids and, like, and like people grab them and throw them in the air, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I wish... Like, what I'm trying to say is that when you're an adult, like, most people weigh a certain amount where, like, most people can't grab you and throw you everywhere. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, every adult does weigh that much. So, but yeah, I wish that John Cena or like Jane, Dwayne Johnson, like some strong ass person would be here and just like swing me, like get my arm in there. No, <laughs> you know people grab it. Like you know when you're. <laughs> this is another thing people do to kids. You know when like they have you and you keep going. They have you by your hands and you keep going around in a circle. Then their legs lift off the ground. Uh, oh you know, yeah, so that's I want fun. John Cena to do that to me. Like he's uh, spinning me around. I'm holding onto his arms and my legs are off the ground because he's spinning me that hard. That sounds And then fun. he lets go and I was flying to the sky. Yeah, okay. But then he catches me. That, I, was bit, <laughs> <laughs> I was between this like magical scenario. Okay, someone needs to somehow make this magic happen. Two people hold hands and and we've <gasps> like I've done this, you spin in circles, but what if somehow gravity allowed you guys to both be um like Levitate off the ground and be flat with the ground. It's been awful. Somebody <laughs> needs to create fine. that. Also, I just thought of the Disney town again and I pictured. What? I pictured if they wanted to make it all like so Disney ish that they had like a cord in the sky, like, a, and they had a, a Aladdin on a magic carpet flying around the town. Oh, uh, like every day out. Yeah, but there was like a track on like a, in the sky, so like, it looked like he was flying. What if when you ordered it? DoorDash, it came with a Aladdin flying from oh the sky. Oh my god, like the beast comes, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Is that kind of scary? That'd be or funny. Ursula. Ursula's little house. Oh yeah, she comes uh, comes and delivers it. She's the queen. <laughs> <laughs> so I like roller coasters, but but it is annoying because it seems like as I get older I get a little bit more scared. Mm. Like like I I think like That's what's sad. Cause I do love the zipper at county fairs where you're stuck in a cage. There's no buckles because the cage is so small. And you get flipped upside down so many times as you go around a Ferris wheel like But the thing is like I <laughs> love that, but I don't want to be stuck in a cage anymore. I don't think I would go on the zipper anymore. I think I've only gone on it like once or twice. Just because I picture me being at the top. You're locked in. I know. And then a fire starts. And the reason why this <laughs> isn't a crazy scenario. Have you been to these county fields? Those cords everywhere. And then there's these stands that <laughs> oh make lemonade God. cords everywhere. Like, these places are just, like, 
dust. <laughs> I, I, hopefully none of them sound on fire, but they're like destined in a way to sound on fire. I just saw a TikTok the other day of the most scary thing at a county fair. What? So you know those county fair things where it just goes upside down? It's like this thing on an arm and it goes in a circle. So it was going up and the, the county fair thing was starting to tip backwards. So people said, oh my God. And they ran and jumped on one side so it would weigh it down so it wouldn't effing tip over. Wait, what? What ride was this? The kamikaze. The kamikaze. People, how did it they It was jump? tipping backwards because the weight was wrong. <laughs> and people were standing on the front. They were all gathering on the gate because they wanted it. And it didn't tip, luckily, because enough people jumped on it. But they had to weigh it out so it wouldn't effing tip. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to go on county rides But the thing about again. carnival rides, like, they're loading these rides up into a semi after. So, like, if these rides can be put into a car and drive around the country to different fairs, it isn't. That's what. That's why I hate, though. Like, why do we have to remember all that stuff? Like, I want to go on the zipper. So, if you really want to live out your fantasy, um, I'm not endorsing this, but if you, if I, like, okay, so if I really wanted to go to a county fair and live my life, I think this is what I would have to do. And maybe one day I'll do it. It's just um, take like a high dosage of um, anxiety meds. And oh, yeah. Like, so, like an remember, amount of meds where you're okay with being stuck in a cage. Yeah, like take, I don't know how much I would be, but take an amount where like, where like you just, you don't even think you want that stuff. You're just like, I'm excited to go on the comic hat. I'm thankful. <laughs> or I'm, I maybe I'm be able to do it if I had a tool kit with me. <laughs> so, Why? So then, <laughs> so then if I get stuck in the cage, I can break out, you know? Oh, okay. Like if because, I had an electric saw with me. Yeah, I think I would feel safe on any amusement ride, roller coasters, anything. If there was a button, well, I could get out. Press, but then it would also scare me because if I accidentally pressed it, but it was like <laughs> hidden, well, I could press it and just everything would get unlocked and I can just leave. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh, I I do want to go on the rides at the county fair, but it just is scary. Yeah, if any of you guys have worked at a county fair or like worked on one of those rides. Let us know any stories you guys have that you want to share. I think most of the time it just is a button, right? Like, like it isn't that crazy using it, right? Oh, yeah, I think. So I think, yeah, you just click a button, maybe. But then there's so much in your hands because it's like, is it going to tip over this time? I know. Like, whoever set up that ride was probably like, shit, like, I got to run. Is it? This is what I picture <laughs> happening. So they're taking it out of the semi. It's like three in the afternoon. They've been walking. They've been driving since like 6 a.m. And they're like... And if you look at the instruction manual, it says nail it into the ground. Okay. Like you get those the things. thought of them looking at an instruction <laughs> manual to know how to put up these rides, but they probably do. Yeah, and and, and it like um and it says put um stakes in the ground to keep it. But but they were like oh, it's seven o'clock already. Like I'm over this. And then they were like nothing has happened out of these other times. So what's gonna happen this time? Yeah, but the whole thing with the weight thing, like what did they usually have to put there? Like a bunch of sacks of sand or something? Well, well, I put just like steak. In the ground. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god well luckily no one got hurt but um well no talking about disney so, so we talked about um pinocchio last week and you know oh, yeah. how he said that he's um gay now oh yeah like, homosexual really gay. he's like a big homo like big i know like not just gay like gay yeah like disgusting homosexual i'm just kidding we all love all gays but do you know there's three pinocchio movies coming out this year people comment shut up commented this on bitch them. why is there three I guess there's the, and honestly, I don't really get it, but there's the live action Pinocchio, which I think is from the clip that we watched last week where the character sounds Oh, gay. wait. I thought it was a cartoon. Wait, actually, maybe the live action's another one then. But yeah. there's, well, there was this tweet that said there's three new ones, and then there's a Reddit post that said there's four new ones. So Is it because nobody owns Pinocchio, so that all these different movie studios can make their version? Yeah, maybe that is why. But why would it all be coming out of the same year? No, that kind of pisses me off. The same thing happened with Snow White. What? Like, first of all, Disney never even made a Snow White. It, first, these two other companies did. Wait, Some, they did? Yeah, like, first of all, Kristen Stewart was in a Snow White that was kind of like about a war. It was like Snow White and the Huntsman, where it's like, boo, I want to watch like a cute Snow White movie. What and then the one? other one was like a cute, a cute Snow White with Lily Collins, the girl who's in Emily in Paris. And, um, oh, okay. That one wasn't even made by Disney either, but that was more of like the actual like story. Why but, doesn't Disney own these characters? I, just I think it's would. because they're like urban, um, legends. <laughs> urban legends. Oh no, like they're like um, ancient like folk fairy tales. I like guess? yeah, like ancient stories. So like no one technically owns it. Maybe. Oh okay. Why don't like going back to like. Thinking about like fairy tales and stuff, like is there any modern day fairy tales that are created that I just, I just don't know of? Um, maybe like is like is Family like, Guy, Green Eggs and Ham. Oh yeah, oh my god, had a shiver go through my body. Um, um yeah, like yeah, probably a Doctor Seuss type shit. I forgot what movie. Oh, this was the movie that would someone. I think it was Disney. This one was Disney. They made um Beauty and the Beast, but with real people. Did they? 
Oh, yeah, they did. Because I wasn't there. People were mad because there was a like, gay in it. People were like, the whole plot is about bestiality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, so gay being in it, that's pretty mild. Because she's literally like banging a bear. How many banging years a bear. ago was that? <laughs> huh? How many? Was that like four years ago? Five, six years ago? Yeah, like three years ago. I actually don't know. I can't. Time, like, I feel like I just don't know time anymore. Yeah. I feel like I wasn't like graduated high school. Time is just. It is, for some reason, like lately, it's actually been scary. I don't know if it's because I'm 28 or whatever. So like, I'm actually like getting up there. But, like, I see things on Twitter, and I'm like, what? Like, it'll say, like, um, Part of Me by Katy Perry came out 10 years ago, and I'll just be like, ew. Oh, that's, like, weird. It's just, like, creepy for some reason. Because, like, I view that, for some reason, I still view, like, Teenage Dream as, like, recent. That I don't, like, I, I guess I can kind of get it. But, like, what, what, why time is weird to me? Because I time is kind of weird to me recently. is because I feel like, I feel like. Like, when I look back on a week, it's like, that went fast. But when I look back on a day, it's like, oh, it's going good. Yeah. It's weird how, like, I mean, you could, I could always do this, but I guess time is just an illusion at the end of the day. That's true. It's a little social construct. Yeah. Just to keep us sane. Yeah. Or I'd be going crazy. <laughs> no. Okay, so there's three Pinocchios, and the thing about it, this Reddit says there's four, actually. This Reddit post. Okay, so there's the gay one. What are the other ones? Um, There's one coming in Netflix this holiday it that's holiday ish <laughs> so they're doing a holiday one okay so uh, what i'm guessing is one person said that, okay we're gonna do a pinocchio movie and these other companies were clout chasing it being like we're doing two bitch <laughs> I think the thing about it though is that since there's so many streaming platforms like all of them are gonna be successful i, I know because it was also a similar thing um when romantic comedies were so big and friends with benefits was kind of like a new thing, like in the zeitgeist being like, Oh yeah. Like F people, no strings attached. Oh, yeah. There was two rom-cons with the exact same, um, two like very big romantic comedies with the exact same storyline, friends with benefits and with, um, Mila Kunis, I think. And the other one was, um, no strings attached with Natalie Portman. And they both were like really successful. And they're oh, the they exact were. same storyline, two people F and they're like, we don't, we don't want any strings attached. Then they end up falling in love. Yeah. What's like the, um, well, like, I don't know if there is one right now, but it's so funny thinking about the next thing that would be in like dating. Like, like, this is what I like, w like people know this is a thing, but like, um, will it be the most like, like, like the new, like popular movie idea? Like people are dating on and off in their twenties and then they live together in their thirties, but they just don't think, but they think marriage is dumb. But then like when they're 36, they end up getting married. Cause like they find a meaning oh my in God. marriage. Like, I don't know, like some that could shit for like that. sure be a romantic comedy. That would, yeah, because they'd be like, yeah, like, yeah, nowadays it's just swipe left, swipe right. Like, you're not going to get married. F marriage. And then they'll be like, then they'll fall so deeply in love. They'll be like, we need to get married. Yeah. Like, and then they'll say, yeah, it'll be something like marriage is the thing that makes us like, um, I, yeah, it makes us like, like it's no, so we love each other. sacred, you know? And I'll realize at the end, like. I guess it was always the most beautiful thing. Yeah, and then they throw a wedding, and it's like a traditional wedding. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh. Another thing that's kind of like um, a new thing, and not new, but like kind of new, I guess I could see movies being about, is the ghosting phenomenon. People saying like, oh. you ghosted him. I could see like a, a romantic comedy, like you got ghosted, and then like they track down the person who ghosted them and end up falling in love. Oh, okay, yeah. So with this whole ghosting thing, obviously it's always been a thing, but like, but like, um, I get it confused. So like, is like. Is is ghosting like always like so? How does it go down? Is what I want to know. Like, is it a thing know. like you you guys are actually talking, or is it a thing where you just talked a few times and then they just stop talking? Yeah, because if it's, if it's something like that, I don't really view it as that big of a deal. Because I've seen like things where where like people say like they ghosted me, but then it turns out we're like oh like they kind of over exaggerated. Like I I understand being mad if like you were dating someone or even talking to someone for like months and then they just randomly stop replying to you. Like obviously I'll be like oh that's weird. Why don't you just explain like maybe you're not interested in me. Like you can just tell me. But if you literally went on like one or two dates, I almost think ghosting could be the way to go because I I feel like I've heard of situations where people like after one or two dates text someone and be like. Yeah, like, I'm just not into this, like, so sorry, like, we can still be friends and stuff. And the person replies, like, oh, I wasn't even that, like, interested. Like, you're making this huge deal, but, like... But, okay, so, like, if you, if you, like, yeah, so it's kind of a thing where, like, if you do say that, then, like, then, like, then, like, you're, like, looked out, looked at as, like, creepy, because it's, like, know, like, it's, like, oh, wait, like, you were taking this so seriously, but then if you don't do it, it's, like, oh, but you ghosted me, like, I actually liked you. Yeah, because I could see if you go, maybe, say you go on two dates with someone, and you just aren't into them, so they, they, they text you, and you just don't reply, and you're, like, hopefully they get the hint, like, oh, I'm just not into them, but, because you don't want to keep replying, and then it's, like, you're leading them on. Yeah, and you also I don't, don't want to be, like, we're done, because it's, like, you know, I've never even started, you know? Yeah, the reason why I'm curious about it is, because, like, is, because, like, I'm not, like, 
whenever I go on social media, it seems like ghosting is always mentioned. Like people, like I saw this video the other day where like, I guess there was this big TikTok thing about this one guy in New York City that had like, was dating multiple people at a time. Have you heard about it? What I was his name? Rem- he had like a name, like a nickname, apparently. Love Bummer? Yeah, and it was like a name before it though. I don't know. Well, yeah, there was like this, and I was just, I'm just curious, like how does it go down? Yeah. Like obviously, oh, yeah. yeah, if you've seen each other for five months and they ghost you, that obviously is, um... Rude, I mean, obviously, way. I would be offended if someone did it to me because I've even seen on Reddit, like on people just like tell their like drama and ask for advice. People say like they went on a date with someone and then by the time they got home, they thought the date went good and they like go to text them and they've been blocked. <laughs> it's like that's, that's just funny. rude. And that's, it, like it, it you've been actually bl- funny, but, like but. going to the point of blocking them. It's like shit. What did I say? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, you're you're um, right. Like it seems like ghosting. Like. There probably already is a movie on it, but like that is like the new, oh, yeah. the new no strings attached. It's like going on one day and then ghosting someone. Oh yeah. But was there anything else about the Pinocchio? Oh yeah, so the Pinocchio thing. <laughs> so there's that Netflix one apparently. Yeah. Then there's the Pinocchio with the guy that um is gay. Oh, the gay one. Pinocchio well. Waddle of Life. Oh, hey, a little water themed one. And then there's the Disney. So yeah, there's the Disney Pinocchio. There's this Waddle of Life Pinocchio. There's the live action Pinocchio. And then there's a Netflix Pinocchio. Wait, so the gay one is live action? It's not animation? I don't know. So, um, This Reddit user just posted all these covers and those full covers. So I'm just assuming that's each of them. But maybe there's two. I think. Oh my God. Yeah. Like Pinocchio's having a big year. Like I'm kind of nervous. Like, is he going to flop? I feel like because it's been know. a while. Like this is Pinocchio's big comeback, and like, are the people gonna enjoy him, or like, will he just be a little flop? The thing about it is that these movies, like most of them, obviously adults watch them, but like they're targeted towards children. I think, and it seems like Pinocchio isn't like in even when I was a kid, like it wasn't a big Disney character. Like it's yeah. kind of like more like on the sidelines. Like if someone mentions Pinocchio, it's like, oh, I've heard of him. Like, yeah, I guess I get it because like. Maybe everyone who has kids now, like, they used to like Pinocchio, so they'll bring their kids to it, but, like... But I thought Pinocchio was, like, old. Like, like is this, yeah. like, the first remake since, like, 1950s? Honestly, I don't know. Because, like, when you were a child, like, was P- Pinocchio wasn't big, right? I, I mean, I guess was. all the Disney movies were. Like, even Snow White. Isn't Snow White from, like, so fucking long ago? But, like, it still it was big because, like, everyone just watched all of those, you know? But wasn't it kind of, like, on the backbone? Yeah, it was, it was sort of in, like, like, the Sleeping Beauty category. You know, like, Sleeping Beauty, like, she's there... But she's not one of the main girls, you know? She started just sleeping in the corner. Same with Pinocchio. But, like, Snow White, Cinderella, Little Mermaid, like, those are the top three. And Pocahontas, those are, like, the top four. But anyone else that's like, yeah, you were cool, but you didn't really, you didn't fully pop. But should we get into company secrets? Um, oh, yeah, but um, first I have to do an apology. Oh, oh, my God. So, a few weeks ago, I said, I was joking on it and said, Julia Fox is so funny. And then I said, like, because she did this interview with Paper Magazine and it just sounded so funny because it talked about Hong and Kanye West dating. Wait, why do you have to apologize? So what I'm apologizing is because I said, I said, like, it's just so funny. Like, like it just like, it just like looks so cringy. And, <laughs> and like, it, it was like, if you read the Paper Magazine, it is funny. But, but like, after seeing a few clips of her and I read her Instagram story, I just love how she's being, so she broke up with Kanye West, or they broke up, whatever happened. But mm-hmm. um, she she put on her Instagram story, when they broke up, she said, um, buy my book when it comes out for, she put something along the lines, along the lines buy my book when it comes out for Al the T. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm now a fan because I like how she's fully, like, milking it. I she know. Said, I, I do don't know like the her book's vibe. Gonna be about Kanye West, but she said that get get the book, whatever the book is, mm-hmm. when it comes out to get out of the tea. It seems like a lot of people like are so mad at her. Like I hear people talking about the situation. They're like, "F Julia Fox, like disappear." But it's like, why are you guys so angry? Like she she hustled her way into the press. Let her live. Yeah, my my apology is like she seems cool, and I do love them um, that TikTok song around of a, uncut, uncut gems. gems. Right. <laughs> oh, it's so. Funny. I was just using uncut gems. Uncut gems. I hope um we see more of her. I'm excited to see where she'll go. I know. I'm actually. I f- yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, Julia Fox is my new queen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> queen. <laughs> queen shit. Yeah, she's like. I do follow her on Instagram. I followed her too. And I've been watching her stories. I'm like, she just always like fashion shows. It's like, you're just so bougie. I know. She's just like the New York. Also, the funniest thing ever <laughs> about her is um Anna Delvey. Is that her name? Anna Delvey, the girl who scammed all of New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she scammed all of New York, went to prison. There's now like a Netflix thing about her. 
But Julia Fox was friends with her. There's photos of them together. That's funny. I know. Like, little scam queens of New York City. I know. And yeah, basically, I just wanted to say, like, it turns out, like, it turns out she's she's a hustler. Hell to the motherfucking yes. I hope her and Kanye get back together. I'm I really need a, worried. I need to watch Uncut Gems, actually. Un- Uncut Gems. Have you watched it? I just know it has Adam Sandler, and he, like, plays, like, a very serious role. Okay, so I need to watch Uncut Gems. I know. She's a queen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Julia Fox, if you're watching, um, I didn't mean to throw shade or anything. It's I all know. love. It's all love. <laughs> What's that song? Um, that I say in the Saturday in the nineties by uh, oh, Queen Herbie. Herbie. I try, the other day I was googling like famous rappers from Nebraska, and she was like second. Wait, who's number one? <laughs> um, let me get it out. I I typed in famous. I just rappers. thought Queen Herbie would be number one. The number one rapper is. Pigeon John. Oh, I'll have to listen. And then Thor is Miles Black. And then Nick's Nick Huxon. I don't know who that is. Oh my god, I have to get out. I have to get more educated on my Nebraska rappers. Yeah. But um I did find a little TikTok thing of people spilling company secrets. So I thought we could listen to a few and learn about some secrets of the biggest companies in the world. Okay. Let's do it. So, like, any company? Anything. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. Um, let's see what the first one is. I used to work for a very large chain bookstore that's very litigious, so we won't name them. Uh, Sheds and Royals, we'll call them. And uh, they get those big comfy chairs that they have in the building, steam cleaned, twice a year or so. Um, I came in one day and, and was watching the guy do it, and, like, all this stuff was coming out of the chair. As, as he was using this machine and I thought it was a chemical and I said that's pretty funky looking man what's going on here and he's like oh that's urine pardon me he's like oh yeah he's like anytime you like go to a public place and they have all these like fabric chairs and stuff he's like don't sit in them because they're usually full of piss you we were at um Costco the other day getting some stuff and we were sitting at this um like outside furniture thing and i just randomly mentioned lucas it literally smells like piss and okay <laughs> just for a box just for like a little si- side note of this story i don't think it was from the chairs but the, but this guy said it okay but basically we're sitting on the chairs and i was like why smell like piss <laughs> and then lucas told me about this and i know there is a chance that i did smell like piss because of um, this. And I didn't even have an idea of what story he was talking about. Like, he gave a little... Usually, they, like, is rhyme it. Is it Bounds and Noble? Because he said blank and blank. Oh so, like, he put the and. Oh, it probably is that. But I could... That's... that. Like, you wouldn't picture someone to piss on a chair at a Barnes and Noble. Let's just say it's that. Like, but the thing is, apparently, every single time they cleaned these public cushioned chairs, there was just so much piss in them. So, like, anywhere you go, any waiting room, like, are people just pissing in those chairs? Is it from little kids? I just don't get it because I'm trying to yeah, picture adults who wouldn't. would piss in the chairs. It probably is from people's kids just pissing. Yeah. Pissing all over the chair. Because I, I just don't, most, I don't think most people piss in But I believe chairs. this because is it, I don't know if everyone has this memory, but I have memories of sitting on those types of, like, chairs with a big-ass cushion, all cloth, and smelling urine. Like, you, you've had that before, right? Yesterday. I oh, yeah. The other day, yesterday, like that, I for sure believe that every cushioned s- surface in public is covered in urine. Oh, yeah. I feel like everything's just gross. Yeah, for sure. It's in like public. Stay yeah. in your house. Isn't there like a thing that like everything's covered in shit? I mean, isn't probably. like money covered in shit? Um, yeah. Like, people... you, I feel like money's one of the dirtiest things, like actual cash and punny. And, but like, I'm never points. grossed out by it. Because think about like it's been, it's, unless it's brand new, but it's been, I like, know. everywhere. Up everyone's ass. Yeah, money goes so many places. I know. Every time I get a wad of cash, I shove it up my ass. What else is something that's like disgust? I guess like the bottom of shoes. But oh, the yeah, thing about it is that like, even though I know this shit, it's disgusting. Like this chair thing. Like, 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 it, like it doesn't keep me from being, from being like so grossed out. Like I'm, I'm still gonna be sitting on those chairs. And, like, yeah, and, like, that's the thing. And I'm still gonna be um, be um. What did we say was the, the second thing that was disgusting? Money? Yeah, I'm still going to be touching money and not even be grossed out about it. Yeah, that I'm going to sit on public couches. I don't care. Like, that's like saying every single airport cushion has pee. It's like, It cares? does have pee, but, you know, it's like, like I guess you have well, to you take a shower, you know. That's what I always think. Whenever I'm in gross situations, like, if I have, like, dirt on me or, like, say I did sit and piss. Like, obviously, I'd be so mad. But then I always just remind myself, eventually, I can take a shower, you know? But, yeah. That's, that's why I always true. shit my pants. I think 
Eventually, I can take a shower. That's true. It'll be clean one day. This was a good insight, though, because now I know, like, I am sitting on pee. I know. It's great. I bet even, like, the couches at people's houses are covered in pee. Oh, yeah. piss people. All the couches at my house are. Okay. Okay, that was interesting. I didn't know that until today. So I worked at Taco Bell for almost three oh, years. Taco Bell. And I'm here to tell you the, all the truth. So ground beef it, girl. is in fact real ground beef. I love like TikToks that say I'm, I'm going to tell you all the truth. Right? I know because she already said ground beef is real beef. So we're good on that. It's just has a lot of water and seasoning in it. So but it's safe. I promise the grilled chicken. It's real grilled chicken. You're fine. Go ahead and eat it. Oh, great. The shredded chicken run run the opposite direction away from the shredded chicken you can swap out the shredded chicken for grilled chicken on any of the items fyi but the shredded chicken is all the bits of the chicken that you don't want to eat and i promise you eventually you're going to get a bone um also oh. the steak so disappointing because i know it's like the most appetizing thing it's 90 percent gelatin if it gets left out for any amount of time it turns into a slab of gelatin just trust me and stay away from the shredded chicken steak that steak thing doesn't gross me out that much because like gelatin gelatin but like that's fine like i'm down at least you know like people always say like reduce your meat intake like 90 percent of the steak is apparently i know gelatin is also an animal product but like it's not like you know you're not eating red meat i guess because red meat's bad so they're just looking out for our health the thing about it is that i'm fine with this one because from my knowledge i don't think i've ever well, recently, I have steak from Taco Bell. When would I ever? I, I never I get the steak. I am not like a fan of the steak, to be honest. Yeah. But then, um, shredded chicken. Yeah, I'm what like, is that in? Yeah, what is the shredded chicken in? I don't know, because when I get a chicken quesadilla, it's grilled chicken, so. Yeah, so I think I'm good on that. But thanks for spilling, sis. I know. I, I liked it, though. The thing, I've seen, like, TikToks of people inside the Taco Bell kitchen. And, like, it's what I expected. Like, like people had bags of rice, just dried, um, pre-cooked rice, and then you put it in oh, water yeah. in the plastic bag. And then, like, the beans were just all dried beans, and you put it in water. Like, mm-hmm. like I feel like, with my, like, I feel like when I picture fast food, I don't, like, picture it to be like, oh, it's, like, flown in, fermented. Like, oh, obviously, it's just it's most of the time frozen, and you put yeah. it in the microwave. Yeah, a bunch of gelatin. Yeah, I mean, I that actually, when you actually think about it, that is disgusting. But I don't even get the steak, so I'm yeah, good. Yeah, I'm still off for Taco Bell. Jello, like I just don't. Okay, Jello grosses me out just in general. Oh really? It doesn't gross me out, but like, when would you eat Jello? I'm like, a Jello boy. I know Jello used to be like so big in like the 80s or something. I know it used to no even earlier like the 50s like Jello was fancy people like people put like meat in it. Cakes. Yeah. yeah, apparently it was like a fancy thing if you had a dinner party like have a Jello. I think it was because they thought it looked so cool because they never had seen something like that. So they're like, oh my gosh, that's like fancy. Somehow jelly. Plates turned into charcuterie boards like over a span of 50 oh, years, yeah. but that did happen. That's the now new Now charcuterie board is like the new, like, oh my God, it's so fancy. I know. Okay, the next one. Years ago, I used to work for this department store that rhymes with Borgstrom. When I first started there, I actually worked in the shoe department. One day, these ladies tried to come up to me and return a pair of Noah Blahniks. They were sandals, they were silver, and they were actually kind of dirty. So, mind you, she had no box. She says, I want to return these shoes. I said, how is that? She said, you just look it up and return it to my card. So instantly, like, I'm flabbergasted, and I go ask my manager about it. She says, yes, that's actually true. So, of course, they try to go through all different avenues to see if you actually got the shoes from the store. But if they can't find it, it doesn't mean they're not going to return the shoe. What they do is they actually look at the price of the shoe now. So say you got the shoe for five hundred dollars back then, and now it's like for three seventy five. Majority of the time, people are gonna take that three seventy five. Later in that week, I actually had a lady who returned two pair of shoes that came in the box. Oh, but she got these shoes ten years ago. I asked her. I said, "Why are you returning these shoes?" She said she lost her job. Mind you, these shoes were like five hundred dollars each. As soon as I scanned them on the computer. There was a receipt. She got $500 for each pair of shoes. Oh, and mind you, they actually own their own bank. So as soon as you go to return something, it's probably in your account within 30 minutes to a day. Oh, damn. Okay. So basically, you can return anything back to Nordstrom even years later. I've heard this before. I've heard that like people bring stuff from like 20 years ago, and they're like, give me the money now. It's been completely oh. used. I know, like, other places have return policies like that. Like, Costco has a return policy that, like, you can yeah. return anything, apparently. And I think they do it because most people aren't going to do that. Like, you are going to get some people who will be like, oh, I'll actually return it. But most people aren't going to bring, like, shoes that are worn without a box. Because, like, they'd be too, they'd be, like, too shy. But some people are, like, 
<laughs> it's your policy. I'm not even doing anything wrong. This is literally your policy. Yeah, it makes me like think about Nordstrom or these other brands that do it. And it's like, what's the pro to doing this? So obviously it's like enticing, like, oh, I can return. But couldn't they just say after a year you can return? Because then it's like, oh. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable yeah, like, anyway. Why does that have to be for cool. a lifetime? So what's the pro to this? Because to me, like, it's not even like. I guess, I guess it just makes the it gives the impression like we trust our customers so much and like if you don't like anything don't be too stressed out when you're shopping here because if you don't like it you can return it like oh, that's sort of what they want to do yeah but she, I've heard of this one but I'm glad I was cool to hear it from like someone who actually has worked there but um she said that you you um get the return price of what it's on sale right now oh, so it yeah. made me think of a hack if something's on sale like what if I bought these um, Louis Vuitton shoes, and they were on sale for $800. But two weeks later, they cost $1,600. Oh, my God. Buy stuff on Black Friday. Okay, wait. If, if that's how it works, obviously, I'm not the wait. first person to think of this. I'm for sure not the first person to think of this. Same with Costco. You can make so much money on Black Friday. Buy it for the low price, and then once it goes back up, you're getting the money. Wait, I need answers to that now because because – she used the example of like buying it for five hundred, then now it's three seventy five. So yeah, three seventy five. But I'm what like, happens if it goes higher? I'm assuming they have to honor it. And Nordstrom owns their own bank. That's like oh, sounds yeah, was, intense. I know. They must be like rich. I didn't know anyone took advantage. Like I, I thought it was a thing where like you could return anything to Nordstrom, to an exception. Like if I returned shoes and they weren't in a box, they would say no. But apparently, you still can. So you can oh, like yeah. use these shoes up. I know, broken souls, everything. But after a while, would they not let you do it, do you think? Or, like, they wouldn't let you in the store? Because, like, huh? there is bowels really, of people, If you really like. started doing it, like, every day, they'd be like, okay, we're, we're done. Yeah, like, they won't, wouldn't let you. Okay, that's interesting. I, I've always wanted to hear, like, stories of people actually doing that. For two years, I worked at the largest social media company in the world. Let's call them Smaysmook or, well, Weta. But um, I worked in the advertising operations, and yes, they are listening. This one, I didn't know if it was a troll or not. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, because it kind of felt like um she was in a, like doing a joke. Yeah, but she's uh, claiming that she worked at allegedly Facebook. You know, people always say, "Oh my God, I was just talking about this product, and the ad shows up." She's saying they listen to you. There's a microphone. But I remember I, I did look at the comments because I thought people would be like, "Oh ha, she's like a comedian. This is all a joke." People were saying like. Yeah, finally it's confirmed. Like, I knew it. Um, I mean, like, I believe it is the thing. I don't, like, think uh, it's, like, some crazy idea. For some reason, I feel like it would have to, like, legally be in the user agreement, though. And, like, if she knows it and she worked there and she's just out here saying it, like, wouldn't she have had to sign something to, like, never release this info? Well, I guess know? she she gets away. I don't know the legal legal terms of it, but she said, like, she's not going to say what it is. <laughs> Waste book. <laughs> okay, seeing this one, I don't know if I'm on, like, a side of TikTok that, like, that, like shows me, like, conspiracy theories or something but this yeah. kind of goes into this lane it's not i guess you could say it's a conspiracy theory but but this one it was a black screen and it basically is a secret like this and someone said they worked at um um they worked at this i forgot i think they said they worked at um johnson and johnson but they said but they said it was like another name yeah and i guess they make they make so many plastic products johnson and johnson and they said they were they were at like one of the like um big people in the company's houses and they brought something in plastic um, um, and like, and they were about to give it to them and they, and they said, oh yeah, it's like, um, BPA free and stuff. And then the people said, oh, we don't want any plastic in this house, which like, um, which like, okay. But, but, um, but then they said that it, the conversation went further on and the person that like big, uh, um, Johnson and Johnson said that, um, said that, um, they just use BPA free because it hasn't been studied. So there's no studies on it, but there is a chance it could be worse than the, they used to use. Oh, no, that's I'm scary. not saying this is like facts. I'm just saying I heard it and I thought it was interesting. Oh, okay, that is scary. Because like, even with um skincare, which is way less risky, all you could do is get acne. People always say like, oh, they, they say they take out like the parabens or whatever, but then they put in this natural shit like, oh, like I'm just going to use a fake example, like grass extract or stuff that sounds natural. And then people are like, that might even be more irritating. They just haven't done the studies. Yeah, because because the thing about it is, that I, like, when I saw the TikTok, I was like, that's not even that far fetched to me because, like, because because I I do like pitch it to work like that. So like, if I if something was bad in like this plastic can that I was selling, like, yeah. couldn't you just swap it for an ingredient that's like brand new? Yeah, it's like there's no studies, but and I then guess when I'll the just studies see. do came out, switch it to like something. Oh, well, that's scary. But yeah, like I'm I know like people say like plastic so bad. I, I don't know like the the like 
scientific though behind it. Like um, I don't like so much of our bodies filled with plastic or some shit. Yeah, I remember reading something about that, but then I stopped because I was like, I don't want to know. Yeah, but like I, yeah, I've heard that plastic so bad, but I don't know how it works. Okay, so this is for the people that like to buy name brand products. I used to work for a company called Vijon, and we bottled things like mouthwash and baby powder, alcohol, all that stuff. And so, basically, when you go out and you buy something like Listerine, um, but then you see, say for example, you go to Walmart and you see the Equate brand, um, it's the same product. It's the same exact product. Oh yeah, that's basically what she's product. saying. So these knockoff brands are the same product. You said that they're even made by like the same company and everything, which oh. is that, I guess that if that's, yeah. I feel like, um, I've, I feel like this is one of the most popular company secrets. Like I feel like this gets mentioned the most out of any of them. Yeah, that, wasn't it? That these not like like this Target brand is the same as actual. Oh, or even those Trader Joe's brands. Like I think they keep it pretty secret. Like if they're the like who makes them and stuff, but it like might be the exact same thing as like these other less expensive products. But like they make it seem like it's like fancy at Trader like Joe's premium or something. Yeah, that's what's crazier to me. So like this is already crazy. Like the um the Wamo Equate brand is the same as like this face wash or whatever. But I feel like it gets crazier when when if someone exposes Trader Joe's and says this pasta that's branded as Trader Joe's is the same as this one in Wamo. Because I feel like a vast majority of people think like this. Like I think, oh if it's at Trader Joe's, it's like it's like a it's like like a different it's like premium or some shit. Or like it's from Trader oh, Joe's. Yeah. So you know how like Trader Joe's doesn't seem like it's associated with any other brands really? Oh yeah, for they sure. They do sell other their other brands, but it seems so like tight knit or something. I know. That is interesting though. Okay. Love that it got confirmed. Tell you about them, but I'm not gonna say the names because you can still get sued. People that are um stitching this know that you can still get sued. Okay? I was an envelope machine adjuster, okay? Um the people that worked in the factory that chew chewing tobacco would spit their chew spit in the glue buckets. That glue went on your envelopes. That's what you lick to see. Okay, so basically she worked in an envelope place. She was talking quick. Oh yeah, she did like a few secrets, but I just kept that one. But um yeah, she said she worked at an envelope factory and people would spit their chewing tobacco in the glue that would go on the envelope that we all lick. So oh. that's why I'm addicted to tobacco. The, yeah, that probably is why. I never have tasted tobacco on there. I mean, when you get done, what was it? Like, like pe those those actual people working at these factories. So, like, it makes sense to, like, sometimes go stuff. Oh, yeah, I happen. feel like if I worked at an envelope factory, like, I put Doritos in there. Like, I'd be like, oh, why not give people a little surprise, you know? Yeah. You got a little bit of macaroni flavor on one envelope. Is that a thing? The envelope tastes good? Like, you can lick it and it tastes like ice cream or something. That's a good idea. Oh, my God. My new Etsy shop coming soon. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that'd be funny. I just, like, actually, like, I eat, like, food and spit it on there. That one, like, that one, like, I would never think of. Like, I just never would think of I that. know. That's interesting to know. Yeah. Like, because with these secrets, like, like it, um, like, it just, like, gets to a level where it's like, <laughs> oh, it turns out, it turns out everything is just gross. <laughs> For some reason, I just, <laughs> I just realized that after every single one, I was like, that's interesting to know. It's like, bitch, do you have anything else to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like it seems like after watching a few of these, it's just like it's like oh, interesting. Next, yeah, it's kind of like I mean, I guess everything's a lie and it's all gross. Oh yeah, I have a good one. I used to work at Texas Roadhouse and hear oh, me yes. out. So when you go to Texas Roadhouse, order the fillet medallions. Now it says it comes with a peppercorn or mushroom sauce. I prefer the mushroom sauce, but you can get it without the sauce if you don't want it. Now here's the deal. You actually get nine ounces of filet on the filet medallions. The regular menu only has a six or eight ounce option. It's cheaper than the six or eight ounce option. And you get an extra side because the medallions come over rice or mashed potatoes. Is this your favorite thing from Texas Roadhouse or something? <laughs> no, you can stop it. Basically, I just thought it was, I just, I actually don't even like um, medallions from Texas Roadhouse. But just for any of the listeners out there, like if you're really into like Texas Roadhouse steak, Apparently, you can get a nine ounce version for even cheaper with an extra side. Yeah, then just follow the, her instructions. I knew that was funny because I was like, I didn't even know you ordered this. <laughs> okay, no, okay. I was actually kind of embarrassed when this one was playing because I was like, oh, why did I save this one? <laughs> <laughs> like, no offense to her, but I was like, I don't even care about Texas Roadhouse that much. I mean, but yeah, if you love whatever. Oh, that yeah. Was. That was for like that one person listening who, like, they'll do a lot with that info. So oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Like, there's probably one person that goes to Texas. I'm probably right, like twice one person right now, like, they swerved their car to, like, the nearest Texas Bitch, Roadhouse. We're going. We're hacking the system. Hey, medallions, get them. <laughs> Wait, so what is that? I don't even know. Next. Is that a steak? What? Is that a steak? <laughs> I don't even know. Okay. Let's see what the next one is. I think I was just so excited that she mentioned Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> 
Wait, are you like a fan of Texas Roadhouse? Oh yeah, like I love um just for the appetizers, the the buttered bread with the cinnamon, like. I just love that. And I also love the atmosphere of a Texas Roadhouse. The thing about it is that I feel like for the longest time and still kind of now, I was kind of like, I don't really get what Texas Roadhouse hype is. But like, I, I like it. Yeah. I just like sometimes think like, wait, like, he's like, how did it get so big? I just feel like it's like the new thing. Yeah, it is like very it is, popping. It is good. I mean, the yeah, butter so rolls. Good. And it kind of is like, you know, good. So I used to work for Bath and Body Works and this really isn't a secret, but I do get asked this a lot still to this day. Um, and most of the employees should still be wearing a pin on their apron that says like 100% guaranteed. But for those that keep asking, you can still return those old <laughs> products, used products and tell them you did not like it and exchange them item for item. <laughs> Even burnt candles. It. And then I thought this one was funny because like, again, this is just like Nordstrom. Like, Apparently, Bath and Body Works is um their uh whatever you call it. What am I trying to say? They're like policy. Their yeah. policy is that even if you use all of the body lotion, like you can still return it and say you didn't like it. You burn a candle to the very bottom. You could be like, ah, oh, I didn't really like the smell. Let me return it. So, but like we said, like when is the point where they're gonna call you out for this? So what if you keep buying candles and you're smelling up your house? And you just do, are getting it all for free. Like, when will they draw the line? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because from what I know, I'm not a CEO of a multi-billion dollar business. But, like, but I'm pretty sure, like, everything's, like, marked that F up. So, like, like the people are, like, oh, rich, obviously. Yeah. But, like, when does it get to a point where, like, it's, like, okay, like, we are, like, losing more than we did last year. So, like, are we going to change our policy? Yeah, I almost think that the way, like, human nature is... Only such a small percentage will actually do that this. That doesn't matter. That even if they did it every week, it's fine for the company. Because like you said, the markups are so insane because, anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Like, So if 10,000 people went to Bud Bath & Beyond this one, in this one city, 10,000 people went, they each bought three candles. Mm -hmm. And then let's say a year later, because 10,000 people, let's say even 20 of them came back and got new, all new candles and those were all used. Yeah. Like, they can deal with that, I'm assuming. Oh, for sure. But I feel like out of 10,000 people, not even 20 people would do it. Like, five, maybe. Yeah, because, like... If even. Yeah. Yeah, because, like you were saying, I most wonder, people aren't ballsy enough. And I wonder if the person who works at Bath & Body Works who deals with returns, if they, like, train them to be, like, look down at it a little bit. So, like, you feel intimidated. Oh. Like, you'll be like, wait, so you used all of it? And, like, it's, you're allowed to return it, but they, like, try to make you feel dumb or something. So yeah. You know. This is a good video idea, though. Like, like um, I think I've thought about this before. Like, I, I don't think I'm brave enough to do it. But basically, the video idea would be going to all these places where we torn anything. Like, and actually trying it. And, like, and, like, okay, so, so like, if I went to Bud Bath & Beyond, just, like, and this, this is wasteful. But just squatting it out into the trash and coming back the next day and like, getting a new one. Or and putting then, it all into a jar so you can, like, still use it. Oh, yeah, like... I, cause these people are saying it's real and like, like, yeah, I don't know how it goes down. Like, I don't know if they do try to like, if they ask you questions saying like, are you sure? Like, if they try to like make, yeah, you we have to test this. If I'm ever starting a company, I'm doing no returns, no exchanges. We don't even have a, I won't even have a customer support line. It's like, once you buy it, it's our money. Sorry. Oh, no refunds. I know. Like we love y'all. Like, thanks for supporting our company, but we ain't doing any of that. No refunds. Yeah. Nothing. Anytime you pay for shipping and handling. You're never actually paying for shipping and handling. This is actually a company secret for most companies you'll order from online. Okay, do you want me to just tell you the summarized version? Yeah. No like offense to him. We just have watched so many. Um, and I already like know all of them so much. Um, so basically, he said, I guess he worked for like UPS or FedEx. These companies, these giant companies pay a yearly fee for all shipping and handling. But then they still charge the customers for shipping and handling so that they might say they pay 100 grand for shipping and handling for the year their customers paying for the five dollar shipping and handling each order will usually go way above one hundred thousand. so they're making even more money oh okay so, so like it's, it's all scamming it's a not, lot you at a certain point you are actually paying for shipping and handling you're just yeah. paying for the ceo to it's just away. yeah it's just for the ceo to get his little diamond and bracelet i feel like there's more examples of this if you fully worked if you ask so many people that worked at these companies yeah like i was on there's been multiple posts on Reddit where, like, people ask, like, what's the dumbest payment? And people are talking about these payments where, like, like someone was saying that they pay for their school, their child's school lunch on online. Yeah. And if you put the money in the bank account online, you have to pay, like, a $10 online fee. Um, And it was kind of people were, like, saying, like, how is that still a thing in 2022? And there's, like, other places that have people pay, like, um, like a like an online transaction fee. Oh and yeah, I don't it's know like, how is that like even banks a thing? work and shit, but but like from the comments and stuff, it made it seem like why is this still a thing? Oh yeah, I can see that. But like yeah, so that could also be a thing with just like for money.
Well, actually, oh, yeah, probably. Don't mind me. I literally just woke up, but I don't care. So these aren't necessarily secrets, but I worked at Chick-fil-A when I was in high school and all of their produce is delivered fresh every day, at least the location I was at. So their salads, their fruit, their lemons that they juice. Lemonade, okay, all fresh. juice daily. So it doesn't they actually juice lemons? Come pre-made. The chicken does come frozen, but it is breaded, cut, fried, and grilled there. So it doesn't come pre-cooked. Um, the whole my pleasure thing, it's real. Yeah, you that's will get in trouble it. if you say you're welcome. Just all the food's fresh and the... You're embarrassed of these at this point. The chicken is um, breaded daily. So yeah, it's very I, fresh I, I food. I have thought about that one. The food is fresh, but the homophobia is... Isn't fresh. Oh my god, that that, the food that is, is fresh and the homophobia is fresh. <laughs> that attempted joke flopped so hard. Well, the my, food is fresh and the homophobia is fresh. I'll redo it again. It's like everyone can laugh so hard. The food is fresh, but the homophobia is strong. Yeah, it wasn't good. Oh, Move that's on. That's good. I like it. Anyway, watch the last one. Is it the best one? Yeah, say the is best it for the last. Is it? Yep. Okay. I just don't remember what it is. Okay, let me double click. I don't work there anymore. You check into your hotel room, ask for new sheets, everything, linen, comforter. Top cover, ask for everything new, fresh. Housekeepers are trained to change the linen only. Your comforters can go for about a week or two without being changed. And sometimes the top covers too. They wait until there's stains on them to change them. Ew! <laughs> okay, I already have enough. Like a bitch, when we stay at a hotel, like I... I actually didn't know that any of the blankets were from the previous person. I love how she knew this info, but even when she was saying it in that TikTok, she was still disgusted. She was like saying it like the sheets aren't clean. And like, I, and I, I like fully was like disgusted. You know, like they wait until they're stained. I, so they actually only change the little sheets. They don't change the above comforter. Okay. No, I don't, I don't know if like this is a thing, but maybe at like, maybe Maybe at like higher end hotels they do clean all the time. But it's so funny because even, even after knowing this, even if this was a complete fact, I know next time I go to a hotel, I'm not gonna ask for all new stuff because I just feel like a dick asking. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like I'm being like, I want all new this, all new that, and like they'd be like, Oh, we already were gonna do that. It's like I feel like I'm walking into the situation accusing. Yeah, I know. So I'm gonna it. sit in the shit stained beds. Yeah, and I mean, if I get bed bugs, like I just deal with it. Yeah, a little bit of bacteria is good for you. But yeah, I mean, I I guess like think about these hotels. There's like 200 bedrooms and like how the house, like the room keeper yeah. is gonna clean all that shit. For sure. And comforters like so, take so fucking long to wash. Oh and yeah, dry. and dry. If yeah, I walked to a hotel, I'd just not clean anything. Just like. I know. Like, if I yeah, find a hotel, walk in, do a little Febreze to the room. Okay, next. Come like, on in. Like we were in a hotel like a year ago, and like there was a stain on the cotton. Oh, yeah. Like a little poop stain. It's like, oh, I cute. Well, those are some company secrets. Basically, if you learned anything, don't trust anything. Don't trust anyone. What was my favorite Everything's one? Everything's a gosh damn lie. I don't think... Okay, I actually think not what my favorite one is. Is the whole um, Nordstrom re retoning thing. Just because... Because, okay, going to Bath and Body Works and retoning like a $12 candle and getting a new one. $12. But going to Nordstrom, I'm just picturing me... Gucci. Like, yeah, I'm just picturing me being like... So if one day, so like if I'm Bali one day and I'm just like, I'm going to buy this designer item, I'm going to buy it from Nordstrom so then I can go there like the next week when, I, when I'm when i like, why did I spend this much money? That's so dumb. So then I can back. just return it. Or I'd keep it for like a year and then return it. I know, wear it a few times. That's Post it on Instagram and be like, I have the biggest, I have the most expensive sunglasses and then return it. With these reality shows, people always ask, is this person actually rich or are they just pretending? There's so many ways to pretend that you're rich. Like, this is another way to pretend that you're rich. Like, like, I'm pretty sure it's a thing with some stores. You can lease clothes. But if you don't want to even lease the clothes, you could buy a few designer clothes from Nordstrom, wear them in the show, and then yeah. return them. Buy Fenty underwear and then return it. Yeah. How, is, is Fenty like a luxury brand? I've never looked at the prices. I actually don't even know. Yeah. For some reason, I feel like it's only sold online. So I, just, I was kidding. Don't um, scam Rihanna. She's, do not do that. Stop. Fenty. Fenty Beauty sponsored this podcast. I Rihanna like did that though. Like um like I feel like the makeup industry had been around for so much long, but then she still took it over. I know. That's insane. Go off. Oh, the camera's all stopped. Oh, besides mine. So should I say bye really quick? Yeah. Oh, actually mine turned off too. Bye guys. Bye bye.